Hey everybody, David here, back with another video. And today, we are going to be talking about six attention-grabbing fragrances from my collection. Now, before we start, if you enjoy the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel with notifications on. Any support to the channel is greatly appreciated. And I try to make you all two videos a week for the channel. Now, with that all out of the way, let's get back to some attention-grabbing fragrances. Now, when I say attention-grabbing, these are going to grab you some positive attention. It might be from some people you know, or it might be from a person that you walk by on the street or at your work. They might, you know, sniff around. They'll be like, they'll be like what? what? What is that? And then you just turn around, smirk, and you say, that's my fragrance. Alrighty, so let's hop into the video. First one I got on here, it's a designer, and it's probably one that most people have heard before at the designer house, and it is YEDP from Yves Saint Laurent. So, this one is a blue fragrance, and don't worry, this list isn't going to be all blue fragrances, but overall, I would say for my blue fragrance preference, I would say YEDP and Sauvage are going to be my main two. I don't really wear too many blue fragrances these days because I got so many other fragrances to wear. But this is going to be your jack of all trade fragrance. You can wear this in the winter. You can wear this in the summer. And I will warn you about wearing this in the summer. You might want to dial back the sprays because some people can find it too cloying or too sweet. Um, but this is going to be your jack of all trades fragrance here. And I'd probably say this one. The line overall is very well done. There hasn't been one in the line that I do not like in this Y line. So the main accords of this fragrance, you got fresh, sweet, synthetic, fruity, and spicy. Top notes, you got apple, bergamot, elemi resin, and ginger. You're going to get that apple throughout the whole fragrance, especially like it says in the top. That bergamot kind of gives it a freshness off the top to go with that apple. Same with the ginger, it helps that out. The heart notes, you got juniper berry, lavender, sage, and geranium, and then the base you got vetiver, frankincense, and tonka bean. Now that tonka bean is going to give a little sweetness, and the woods is going to help it stay around for a while. Along, you're going to get some lavender in that mid for sure, uh, combining with that apple towards that end of that opening. That lavender combines with the apple. You're going to get that, and I get that juniper berry really prominent in the uh, middle too. So. Overall, the Y line is great, but for overall versatility, I'd probably say this one is the jack of all trades. This next fragrance I have for you all, this one is from a designer brand that not a lot of people talk about. Probably, I'd say out of the whole, you know, whole United States, there's probably like one out of five people that have heard about this. And that's, that's maybe pushing it. But it is Halloween Man X. I know it's not October, but we got Halloween Man X in here. And this one's a coffee scent. A coffee designer scent at that too, which is very rare. You don't really see much of this. If you saw my last video, this one kind of is along the same lines as, Sarah, uh, as Ferragamo Womo. And this one is the cheapest one on the list that I have out of these six. But it just... It does just as well as these sixes and what it does. So this is a sweet, gourmand, spicy, and synthetic and woody scent. Top notes, you got cardamom, lemon, and lavender. I'm going to be honest, I get a little bit more of that cardamom and that lavender up at the top. And then the heart notes, which this note relates is back to the uh, Ferragamo Womo, is that coffee, mineral notes, cinnamon, lever, and whiskey. So that coffee is the one that you're going to get very prominently in that mid, which I do, and it's a very nicely done coffee. It's kind of a roast coffee. And then the base, you got tonka bean, amber, and frankincense, and that helps to give it that depth to stick around a little bit uh, longer. Now, that whiskey and that lever really helps project that coffee, I feel. And that whiskey is kind of, it's not dominant, but you can kind of smell it on that, the outside, the edges of the fragrance. But at its heart, it is a coffee fragrance. And I would say from this house, I would say Halloween Man Shot is a very nicely done fragrance. And also Halloween Man Hero 
is a fruity kind of summery fragrance. That's going to be kind of the more of the jack of all trades of this line. But today we're talking about Halloween Man X, and for the winter time, it do, it very does a very nice job. Bad Boy Cobalt is the next one I have for you all. So this one, I'll, I'll be honest, this one's in my top 12 for life. This one is never going to leave my rotation. I prefer to wear it more in the spring and the summer, but I have a lot of good memories with this. Like, I remember taking a girl out on a date, and yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. I took a girl out on a date. It was a fun time. And this one, when I wear it, it reminds me of that. This one's got similarities to uh, Invictus Platinum, which I like wearing that fragrance as well. I have that as well. The main notes of this is going to be sweet, synthetic, fresh, woody, not woody, excuse me, fruity, and spicy. And then in the fragrance Pyramid, you're going to have at that top, you're going to have lavender, pink pepper, which I get pink pepper right off the top. Makes it a little spicy. Gives it a little spiciness. Now, this is an unusual scent. Not scent, excuse me. This is an unusual note for designer fragrances, and it's that black plum. You got that black plum in the mid, uh, in the mid that makes it smell kind of fruity a little bit, but not too fruity, if that makes sense. And then you got geranium. And in the base, you got that cedar wood, and you got another note not a lot of designers use is truffle. And that truffle, it's not dominant, but you can kind of smell it. And then you got oak and vetiver. Those woods giving it a nice base for that black plum and that geranium to work in the mid. And this one, it's it's a good performer. It it's a good projector as well. Overall, very happy with the with this fragrance. And they have a new one come out this year. Um, definitely can't wait to get it. It's Bad Boy Cobalt Elixir, and I'm very excited for that one. The next one we're going to be talking about is from one of my ne one of my fa favorite niche houses. And if you watch the videos, you probably already know where it's from. And this one is from Parfum Stamarly, and it's called Hotain. Hotain. Apologize. I can't speak on the video right now. <laughs> it's called Hotain. Man. This one is a very nicely done woody scent and it smells like an old wooden chest if any of you have a wooden chest or smell like a wooden chest with some clothes in it but in a good way this one is going to sell, uh, smell very similar to Initio's Oud for Greatness which these two companies Initio and Parfums de Marley they're related so it doesn't surprise me they came out with like a similar fragrance but the main accords it's woody spicy sweet oriental and leathery at that top, you got clary sage, lavender, bergamot. In the heart, you got saffron, praline, elderwood, and cedarwood. And that's where those woods are coming into place. And in the base, it's got some woods in it as well. It's got musk, patchouli, lever, oud, and vetiver. And that oud in here is not that animalic, stinky oud. It's a it's a wearable oud. Don't have to worry about that. That elderwood, that's a very unique scent. Uh, not scent, sorry. That's a very unique note. You don't really see a lot of fragrances with elderwood in it. But all those woods combined with the little freshness of lavender up its top and the bergamot just really gives it not a unique, but like it gives it a different twist on a woody scent, in my opinion. A little freshness up at the top, and then it gets into that kind of sweet, smoky wood, if that makes sense, in my opinion. And I think that oud and that praline and the elderwood and the cedarwood and even the saffron kind of helps out with that kind of sweet woody feel to it like that old wooden chest i got another lever set up for you all this one uses black lever this one is no other than tom ford ombre lever <laughs> and the reason i'm laughing i haven't worn this one in a while i'm this might be my sit of the day tomorrow at work we'll see this one's a very nicely done lever set very easy to wear Tom Ford Ombre Lover, next one on this list. You got the main accords. You got Lever, Spicy, Sweet, Woody, and Smoky. And then the top, you got that Jasmine, Cardamom, and Saffron. In the heart, in the heart, you got Lever, Black Lever, excuse me, Patchouli, and Vetiver. And then the base, you got the Amber, and then the White Musk. 
Now, I really get that cardamom working with that saffron up at the top. That black lever is prominent throughout the whole scent, I'll be honest with you. The patchouli and the vetiver gives it that smoky feel to it, so it's kind of a little bit of smoky vetiver. And then the cardamom isn't the sweet cardamom, really. It's kind of more of... It, it's not really as sweet as you'll find in other fragrances. It does have a little sweetness in there from the cardamom, but it's not like overpowering. Like I said, the star of the show is going to be that black lever with the smoky vetiver in here. That's really going to give it that, that amp performance and projection. And then in the base, you get that amber helping it out to last a little bit. Now I got a freshie. And this one's from a designer house, but they kind of have niche quality, if that makes sense. So it's, I don't, they are a designer, but their quality is way higher than a designer. And this one's from a familiar name that all of you probably heard of. And it is Louis Vuitton, or Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Imagination. Now this one's the last one on the list, last but not least. And man, this is a summer and spring staple for me. I'll tell you what, this... This might break some necks with people turning around and trying to look back once you walk by them and see, like, oh my gosh, what was that? This one utilizes a black tea note, which not a lot of fragrances use tea in it. The main accords of this fragrance, it's fresh, citrus, aquatic, spicy, and green. Even though it's not listed in here, I get a little bit of a lemon taste of a lemon smell to it and i don't know if it's because of the bergamot or not oh i forgot to mention the notes sorry so you got the black tea bergamot and brock cinnamon ginger cedar and the neroli the neroli gives it that green feel which i really like my green fragrances and i think that ginger combined with that black tea gives it that lemon feel to it and i'm just going to tell you right now you're not going to be able to find Louis Vuittons on uh, discounters. That's the very uh, sad part about a Louis Vuitton fragrance. They do have clones of this, but somehow, in all, well, all these fragrances, I always get a sample of it before you buy. But with Louis Vuitton imagination, it always puts me in a good mood, and it gives me that relaxing confidence, if that makes sense. It puts me in a relaxing mood, good mood, but it also gives me a, comp a confidence boost as well. So, here are the six positive attention-grabbing fragrances from my collection. Let me know what all you wear for your ways of getting positive attention with fragrances. And yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed the video today. And I'll see you on the next one.